All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get everyone with their uh, primary live trade brief uh, with some uh, Facebook earnings. We got uh, big earnings week, obviously. This is a massive, massive week, as we called for uh, for earnings. Looks like we got a little bit of old Amazon going on here. We'll see what's going on. Uh, did some good day trading yesterday in and out of Amazon for 5400 bucks on short calls. Uh, kind of taking the place of my SPX. Uh, Amazon and uh, actually not covered in Amazon uh, and uh, got to fall on my sword, guys. They made a massive mistake. I'm just long Amazon. It's AMC. I'm actually looking through my trade records. I haven't looked at AMC in like eight months. Some reason, <laughs> either AMC was under the trigger, clearly. Um, I have no idea how I sold cash secure puts on AMC. Uh, thinking it was um, what you call it, Robin Hood. Uh, so bad shit on my part, man. So I'm now managing AMC, <laughs> which is just stupid. Uh, I think that's happened once in my life, and uh, now it's twice. So really stupid uh, trading on my part. Um, and that's why I canceled those Amazon short calls. Okay, uh, to, to, to some admin issues. We're gonna do a uh, we're gonna do a solo. Amazon brief for potential new members and you guys if you want to come on uh, Thursday at 1 let's do that if you want to come you can come obviously copy link uh, just send out an email I already got 50 people registered let me paste that in there so that's in the chat box if you want to come because we'll debrief Amazon earnings it's it, it's really interesting to see uh, well we all know the game analysts quote unquote before earnings people are saying they're going to blow the doors off of the people say they're going to suck guess what it doesn't matter it's what the market believes not what a bunch of analysts so we're gonna we're gonna step through um good consumer confidence numbers uh what's going on uh da, 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 getting some uh really positive affirmation or feedback from episode seven uh, of my podcast, uh, and this is why this is why I did the podcast, or I'm doing the podcast. Uh, this is essentially it, this one, and then it's just going to start getting better uh, from here. Um, we have everybody, we have everybody on board that who wanted to get on board uh, for uh, No Fallen Heroes. Uh, really excited about that. Got all, all of we got our angel and funding, and uh, now we're working on the trailer, and then I'm working on getting. Uh, well, the medicine speaks to you, so I'm, I'm not recruiting anybody for December treatment. I'm doors open type of thing, but me and, and five veterans uh, on, uh, you know, uh, in, in December is what we're going to uh, is what we're going to do. So really, really excited uh, about that. So um, or brief Amazon earnings. Uh, instead of, yeah, because they come out after market close. <clears throat> Sledge, I have not finalized my five, man. It's it's kind of a work in progress uh, right now. Um, so, yeah. Uh, just going along, man, going with the flow, seeing who uh, seeing who's seeing who's uh, kind of up for tasking. So, nope, it's, it's a work in progress. I'm talking to some guys and so we'll see. Uh, so do me a favor if you get a chance listen to episode seven if you like it drop a drop a review and I'll send you a book I think I've mailed out like 100 200 books so I appreciate that uh, if you get a chance uh, after you read the book uh, if you can write a review on Amazon for COVID crash that would also be uh, awesome really excited with where we're going man the next seven months of my life is going to be incredible it's going to be a sprint uh, to get this project done uh, I think Ponch just volunteered to come down to Miami for the uh, for the event uh, on November eighth and ninth. Just the way all of this is happening, guys, you can't you can't plan this, and it's not planned. It's God. It's it's the universe. It's truth. It's source uh, working. Uh, November eighth and ninth down here in Miami is the largest psychedelic medicine event ever. Amber and Marcus Capone are on a panel. Uh, you know, uh, I'm. It's just awesome. Uh, at the Performing Arts Center. So Ponch and I are going to throw on our flight suits with our Top Gun Fighter Foundation patches, and we're going to go uh, walk around, shake hands, ask questions. I want to meet Rick Doblin. He's been in Dosed. He's been in a bunch of the movies. 
Uh, he's on the board of directors for Amber and Marcus. I, I'm going to start recruiting some of these folks to get on the board of directors for the uh, Top Gun Fighter Foundation uh, as well. Um, but this is this is going to be ground zero, man. This is just fantastic work. Hopefully, we're at this thing next year as like the keynote speaker. That would be uh, that would be even better because um, we're gonna we're gonna do some good shit. Let me see who else is on here. Uh, Riley Cott. He's an NHL player. Look at that. I didn't know that. There's some really good. Uh... Yeah, Mike Tyson's going to be there. Mike Tyson uh, and Lee are friends. So we're going to hopefully get Mike on film and shake his hand and uh, hear, hear what he has to say. Uh, down in Miami, <clears throat> eighth and ninth, I think it is. I wouldn't register. Uh, I. I I think, uh, what's his name is, uh, this one's in a uniform here. She was injured on active duty. Kimberly Jurovesky, ketamine task force. Um, we're trying to get, uh, press credentials since we're making a movie. It's a lot of speakers. We're definitely going to be speaking at this event uh, next year. I'm putting that out there. I guarantee you we're going to be given a keynote at this thing. After No Fallen Heroes comes out, it's going to be earth shattering. It's interesting because I, I kind of expected a little bit of this reaction because I, I, I'm, I'm in a forum called Old Fighter Pilots uh, on Facebook. There's a couple thousand of us. I mean, hell, we got MIG killers in this thing. We got POWs. We got some dudes that are a lot cooler than me. And uh, I posted all my stuff yesterday, you know, episode seven, everything like that. And couple guys rolled in on me like, oh, there they are. There's Amber and Marcus. Um, you know, like, oh, if you need to do drugs to fucking escape, you're fucked up and all sorts of shit. I'm like, wow. If you're that close to the edge, you know, I'm like, whoa. Hey, man, God bless you. <laughs> First of all, I never said I was close to the edge. Uh, yeah, he's like, if you need stuff like this and you're that close to the edge, you know, I'm fine. You know, God, God help you or something like that. I'm like. Never said I needed this. Never said I was close to the edge, man. But God bless you and thanks for your input. So I expect that, especially from that group, right? I mean, we're dealing with, you know, Navy SEALs, fighter pilots, you know, Green Berets, you know, these type of folks who you know never done a drug in their life. And I took issue with the guy because I'm like, you know, if you have to do drugs, I'm like, it ain't a drug, dude. It's medicine. Oh, we need this society and drugs. I'm like, it's from Earth, dude. It's a plant. You're telling me you don't take an Advil if your back hurts or something like that? Um, it, it's plant medicine, guys. Humans have been around a little bit longer for, than you, old cranky fighter pilot dude. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> do, are we just going to keep cutting off limbs during the Civil War without using some uh, sort of anesthesia that they developed? I mean, it's just a little, you know, God, God put us and gave us free will. He allowed brilliant doctors to evolve and come up with some life-saving type of drugs and stuff like that. I get it. But before that, we lived off the fucking planet, man. Now, I got my Ohm shirt on, but I'm not wearing any Birkenstocks. But it just – I expected a little bit of blowback uh, like that, but that's all right, man. All right, so let's go ahead and get airborne. But that's uh, – if you're down in South Florida, November 8th and 9th, this is going to be awesome. Uh, so I appreciate Ponch is trying to pitch in, and if anybody else wants to come down uh, – I, I agree, Chris. Ego and stigma can get in the way of good. At some point, they will open up and understand. I get it, Chris. And the only the only way, uh, you know, old me would have been up all night bat battling back and forth with the dude. New me just says, hey, man, I love you. Thanks for your input. That's just, you know, that's me nowadays is I just, hey, man, I, I'm, I'm I'm putting that out there to the universe. If if you it's a it's a buffet, man, if you don't like it, just just move on. I never understood, you know. I've gotten a lot better on social media. You guys knew how it used to be, but now I just, I had zero. I, the people that take time to stop and like rip it apart, man, it's like, you ever hear it? It's on your mouse, man. There's a little scroll wheel. Just kind of, kind of do that, baby. Just keep moving. But anyway, uh, it, it, the medicine speaks to whoever it's supposed to speak to. I love this, man. In my morning Twitter coffee, uh, Joe Rogan says his prescribing doctor treated 200 members of Congress with ivermectin, with horse paste, right? <laughs> so, so, And the media is silent about it. So we've seen CNN. They've doubled down on the Joe Rogan story. 
he destroyed Dr. Sanjay Gupta, just destroyed the guy, literally walked around the podcast studio with a mop broom somewhere and, and just wiped the floor with the guy. And then he limped back to CNN and uh, all his, his, his love lover boy hosts boosted his ego back up. Um, so it, it is, um, yeah, exactly. Punch. There's a difference between war comma on drugs, war on drugs and war on drugs. Exactly. I love that. That's a great way to put that, but it's funny. This whole COVID thing, I was at the Panthers game last night. Uh, a buddy, uh, was here from Atlanta. He's like, Oh my God, look at this place. It's packed and not anybody. The only people wearing a mask are, are the, are, are the people who work there, which is, it's just so dumb. The virtue signaling and the dude who owns the Panthers, I forget his name. He was nominated to be Trump's secretary of the army, said something, which of course was truth. And then the media ripped him apart and he pulled back his uh, nomination. And then the COO was an army West Point dude. Uh, my son and I met him. Great guy, kid, uh, army uh, or tank dude or something like that. Saw a ton of combat uh, in Iraq, but Panthers is a great organization. But last night at the game, my buddy from Atlanta, he's like, look at this freedom. I'm like, dude, I even forget COVID exists. I forget unless I have to get on an airplane we're Florida is alive. Nobody it's live your life, man. If I see somebody out with a mask, Hey, that's great, man. Maybe immunocompromised or this, or, you know, like my mom with cancer and shit like that, but everybody else, man, that's the way it should be. You want to do something, you do it. But it was just, it was awesome being at the Panthers last night and seeing a dude from another state like, oh my God, you guys live here. I'm like, Ye, where? Oh, that's right. You're in some sort of communist state. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's go ahead and get airborne. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, oh, look at this. USS Connecticut collision information in South China Sea must be disclosed. So this is this happened and it went immediately quiet. USS Connecticut hit something. You guys want to know what they hit? The US is still keeping quiet about where the collision occurred and what the submarine had hit. Maybe it hit some sort of Chinese underwater something that's a submarine but doesn't have people on it, like a drone submarine that once it detects a U.S. submarine, like attaches it to itself to its hull and just kind of hangs out. Hmm. I love talking to people, man, who who might or might not know stuff. Uh, there's some weird shit going on. Uh, with the Chinese and being able to do stuff. I mean, you guys know me. I, I'm on that Black Files. We did two episodes of the Black Files with that guy. One on UFOs and one on adversary squadrons. But the UFO shit, man. It's really weird that these UFOs come from another planet and only hang around Navy ships and, and U.S. bases and nuclear facilities. They're pretty smart aliens. Maybe the reason our U.S. And so it not it... Isn't it interesting that Lloyd Austin, our quota secretary of defense, is like the number one problem with and facing us is COVID. The number one problem this week is white rage and critical race theory. So the number one problem facing you as the de secretary of defense is not things that move beyond aerodynamics and aquadynamics around military bases. That just doesn't – that's not like a priority, finding out what these things are. Okay, I got it. You're fired. Um, I like the way Amazon's hanging up here, man. It's a good looking sign. Um, uh, Eric, I know Mike, I mean, after we filmed the two episodes, he and I talk every once in a while, he's coming to the Maverick. He just actually reached out to me. He's like, Hey, you still doing the November 20th event? I'm like, nah, not for, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I talked to him. But I mean, we're not like best friends or anything like that, but he, he loves what we're doing and, and wants to talk. Um, so anyway, he is a great guy. He's, he's, a, he's just salt of the earth, dude. He, we, we got along great. I mean, 
He was ripping apart what's going on. All right, let's get going. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm meandering here. Democrats negotiate tax health care provisions as Biden seeks a deal this week. This week. Starting to hear that uh, Manchin might cave. Kristen Sim- Cinema got accosted uh, in um, uh, in the airport last night. Some activist, again, I'm one of your constituents, and you know she got really close to the senator. The senator's like, don't touch me. I mean, these people are just gross. Uh, it's just – and Joe Biden, of course, the last time that happened, he's like, that's ah, part of the process unless you got Secret Service like me. What a jerk. Joe Biden's just a cranky old dick. He's your – I, I hate guys like that. He's just an ass. I can't stand the guy. And at this point, he deserves all bad that's going to happen to him. Before, I was like, it's elder abuse and shit like that. If, if he's so old and senile, he doesn't recognize now that he's being used. He still thinks he's the dude. He's in charge. And I'm the, instead of being taken over by the left wing, all the idiots in the media, well, Joe will be a calming force after Trump. He's a moderate and he'll bring us right back to the center. In left, left of left, acting like he has a mandate, right? You even mention the words like, oh, the last election was rigged. You get thrown in jail, man. Nancy Pelosi in 2016. This election was stolen. It was rigged. And for four years, they ripped this country apart. Bullshit. Trump's a Russian agent. $40 million with Bob Mueller and 19 angry Democrats couldn't find a thing. And they made up the bullshit. Keep in mind that Bob Mueller was challenged to look in all of it and mysteriously never found all the shit that, uh, what's his name, the U.S. attorney is finding and is indicting people for. Anyway, yeah, it is Obama's third term. Um, so they're trying to get this done before the Glaslow Glasgow uh, Climate Summit. Okay, yay. Another green seizing and redistribution of wealth and just more more bullshit. So here's why I'm rambling about this. Um, if they do get a, if we get blowout tech earnings, let, let's let's debrief Facebook real quick. They sucked. What's it doing today? I didn't look. I was watching after hours and shit, but Facebook sucked. But what's the deal? And then did you see all the bad news? I mean, if. if Again, when when the Drudge Report, the top of it is usually it gives you a sense of what's going on, where to go. Well, they moved it down here. All the Facebook shit, man, the, uh, of the horrific stuff that's going on. Facebook leak, tech, share shakes tech giant, hate and terror a- algorithms. Uh, yeah, this is uh, – there is some horrific shit going on. Uh, uh, with some new whistleblower documents. I'm not going to get into it, but they were up after hours. They're de- they might be down right now, guys, but they th- their earnings and but here's the, the the take on it was everybody knew they were going to suck. So they suck less or or however however that was written. Um so yeah, some weird shit going on with Facebook. Here's what I'm getting at is if We'll get in Amazon in a little bit because there's the shitty crowd, then there's the blow the doors off of it crowd. We talked about this a little yesterday in Solo Amazon. Have they lowered the net enough where uh, if they just kind of dribble the ball over the net, it's it's good. It's bullish. Uh, I don't know. It remains to be seen. We will see Thursday after market close. I think I put Wednesday in the emails. Um, got my days wrong. Uh, so, But here's what I'm getting at. If we have blowout tech earnings and we get some sort of deal this week, "Quote unquote deal," um, then it is does this thing continue? This is this is nuts. Now we're an official nuts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Breather eight, nine. Even the breather day, guys. Th- these this doesn't happen. It just happened. Wiz, I get it. Does this keep? No, man. I mean, you don't stand in front of it and try and put on a lid on it now, but get ready when, not if, we take a little bit of a breather. This is nuts. A nine-day rally. I'm not counting that as a breather day. I'm calling this nine days. We're going to talk about Tesla in a couple minutes. Tesla's stupid, and Tesla will pull back to something eventually. Being up another 2 3% today, 
uh, I, I haven't, I've stopped doing the math on the calls that I bought a couple weeks ago because I'm in tears. It's up 5% today. Anybody think it keeps going straight up? Get bullish. If you think this can keep going on, buy some calls right now. Buy them with both hands. If you think these, it's going to take a break, um, get ready to get bearish on Tesla. I have an all, I have a bearish list I keep on my whiteboard. So if I wake up and I'm drinking coffee, I'm like, oh boy, here comes a, a big one. I start loading the boat with these. Okay. Tesla will be one of the ones. It's a high flyer right now that will give some uh, back. Right. So, uh, Jeff, every 1% it goes up, it makes market makers buy 1.1 billion in Tesla stock due to the options that are being held. Exactly. That's a great way to look at it. But that also has to end, right? It's a, it's, it's a snake eating its own tail. Uh, eventually, those, first of all, options uh, expire. And it is a little, it is, Dennis, a little bit of a short squeeze. I had folks who were bear, I know folks who were bearish going into Tesla earnings. Uh, again, that's what makes a market, guys. How can you be bearish on Tesla going into earnings? How can you be bullish? Boom. Oh, shit. I was wrong. You were right. This is what makes a market, a buyer and a seller. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about Tesla in a second here. Let's continue with the whole, if we get some sort of something this week, do, do we, does it, do we just keep going up or do we sell the news? A deal also would help move a stalled one trillion bipartisan infrastructure package across the finish line. Democrats want to pass the infrastructure package this week to provide new funding and re reauthorize existing transportation programs set to lapse on uh, in a week. So, um, you know, oh, my God, did you see the speech yesterday with Biden on Amtrak? Did you see the, the, the one part where the dude literally rambled and made no sense? For like 30 seconds, the words there were, it was a jumbled mess of a shit show. Did you see how it ended? He coughed horrifically into his hand, walked off the stage, and then started shaking hands. I'm not shitting you. Massive hacking into his hand, went right to the rope line and started shaking hands. I was like, oh, no masks, no hand sanitizer, no nothing. I'm not Karen clutching my pearls here, but that's just gross. So anyway, there's a lot, there's a lot swirling in D.C. this week. So I'm asking you, rhetorically, you have to answer it. If we get a deal, do we get a relief rally, or are we looking at the relief rally? All right, Arthur, Arthur, Arthur says the Fed meets next week. We usually go down significantly on Monday. All right, so tech earnings, Microsoft, Apple, got Facebook. Uh, we got Amazon this week. Here we go. I can't stand Twitter. I can't stand Google. I, I love how the, even the social media or the media is like me. They can't even call it alphabet. They just they, they have to add this. It's Google. Nobody, if FedEx changed its name to Steve, we'd all call it FedEx. It's so stupid. Um, so we'll see. <clears throat> Robinhood. I thought I had Robinhood. I have AMC, which comes out November uh, 1st or something like that. COVID numbers have crested. The economic data have been pretty good. Uh, and the early read on third quarter earnings is positive. Isn't that weird? Once we saw the bank earnings, because remember the bank earnings, the financials were kind of porridge. They were hot and cold. There were some that were fantastic, Goldman Sachs. There were some that sucked, Wells Fargo. Um, so it was weird. I, I, I didn't think they were net positive. I thought they were net neutral, but maybe, um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I liked UPS. UPS was up 5%. Now, that's a good sign. That's a good sign for FedEx, man. Oh, they're going to get hammered by all these delays and everything like that. Uh, UPS didn't have any problems. And UPS actually uh, looked uh, gave a good forward look. So, right? All right. Uh, Arthur alluded to the Fed next week. Well, guys, here we go. Um, this is another thing for next week. Do we get a taper tantrum? 
Is it already in that? Or who is it? Uh, Scott. One, one, Scott's essentially become a day trader. Scott's a real estate guy down in Miami. But Scott over in our Max Afterburner group, he's like, I don't look out more than a week anymore. If I do, I get hurt. Maybe some sage advice there because this time next week, man, we got Jerome tapering. Does the market keep going up with liquidity be, being taken away? It could. We're in an insane market. Or is that the excuse to take a breather? So maybe focus tactically uh, for now because, you know, I, we'll, we'll talk Amazon and Facebook here in a little bit. But, you know, when we will put our uh, radar downrange a little bit. Uh yeah, exactly. Google changed their name, but not their stock ticker. Exactly. Um, so the taper next week, guys, I, I after a nine day run, a week and a half. We all know that markets do what markets do. And then the financial media run around and try and find a reason for why the market did what it did. I think we take a break next week, man. Uh, at least get the taper out of our system and then maybe resume, you know, a little bit of a Santa Claus rally. But this is the Fed tapering can't be bullish unless you sit there and go, the Fed taking away liquidity means good things are happening. I used to think like that. Under Ben Bernanke, I'm like, guys, they're tapering because he sees that we can fly out of the nest. Nope. Taper tantrum. I'm like, all right, I'll tantrum with you too. Let's pound it. But initially I was using my big brain and going, He's tapering. That's good, folks. Wrong. Okay, well, I can be wrong, and now I'm going to be right. So I don't know. I don't know. I just know that nine-day rallies straight up uh, usually don't uh, continue, especially with a taper going on. Uh, well, this didn't land too well. This was on the Drudge Report. It was on Zero Hedge. Uh, inside Amazon's worst human resources problem. They're they they they're underpaying their workers every week, right? She sent an email to Jeff Bezos like I'm behind on my e e bills. I'm crying as I write this email. Unbeknownst to Miss Jones, her her email to Mr. Bezos set off an internal investigation. She was far from alone for at least a year and a half, including during. Periods of record profit. Oh boy, I don't like where this is going. Amazon had been shortchanging new parents, patients dealing with medical crisis, and other vulnerable workers on leave. Uh oh. Some of the pay calculations at her facility had been wrong since it opened the doors over a year before. Whoa. As many as 179 of the other uh, employees had been, uh, oh, other warehouses had been affected. Uh oh. So they're. I'm not going to spare, I'll spare you the details. A ton of their workers have been shortchanged and um, th th this is bad. Clearly the stock doesn't care right now, but this is just not, they got to fix this immediately. This is not, I don't, I'm Gordon Gecko and I don't like this shit. That's wrong, wrong. And the fact that this lady had to email Jeff Bezos to to, to start an internal investigation is, um, actually, yeah, that's in the article too, Steve. Yeah, I'll give you this link. Steve said, yeah, some of these people got fired before they went on leave too. Not a not a good not a good look. Not a good look, Amazon. I remember in the old days where a story like that would cause the stock to go down. It's up three percent right now. <laughs> that's old Amazon looking at that chart. Um, <clears throat> all right, now let's get into a little bit of this because this is funny. So we saw Credit Suisse last week hammer Amazon. Oh, they're going to get really hurt with everything that's going on. Paying more people, uh, inflation, and having to, you know, all these supply chain issues. Now, let's read uh, from Wedbush. Amazon is expected to exceed the high end of its earnings outlook. Translation? It's going to have blowout earnings, <clears throat> excuse me, driven by seasonal trends, e-commerce share gains, back to school shopping, preference to shop online amid the pandemic and strong advertiser demand stemming from Apple's recent privacy changes. Wow. Folks, 
they're going with 13.43 per share, revenue of 100. I can't. I still can't believe these numbers. Uh, billion net operating income of seven. This compares with consensus of eight. Let's say nine, and revenue of 111 and income of. So they're going insane, guys. Hold on, Wiz. Last week, Credit Suisse said this. This week, Wedbush says this. Welcome to the stock market. Amazon's profitability should expand as it grows OPEX more slowly than revenues. Amazon Web Services, I love AWS, fulfillment by Amazon, and ads. Remember a couple years ago, their ad thing didn't even exist. Remember a couple years before that, AWS didn't exist. It, Death Star. Should drive steady margin expansion with prime memberships driving overall retail revenue growth. Wow. AWS in particular is expected to grow more than 30% year over year. Holy shit. Looking ahead, we see further room for upside contingent upon a material worsening of the global pandemic. <laughs> Greater than expected levels of advertiser interest and in accelerating business adoption of AWS. Maintain their outperform rating and a 12-month target of 4,300 for Amazon. Wow. Yep, adding a bunch of airplanes as well. So, folks, if you're confused, don't be. I covered yesterday about Credit Suisse and why, why people like that play the games that they do and firms. There's not... We, we laughed yesterday about Moody's and S&P and all the rating services back in the day who would rate the companies that they got paid by. It was great work, man. That was the heydays of Wall Street. Wall Street always has heydays and then they end and then something else happens and then you get more heydays of something. Uh, but this is this was comical. A week ago, the stock gets destroyed by Credit Suisse and then you get something like this that comes out. All right, a couple more things. Uh, and then I, I don't want to read this. I don't want to take too much time on Amazon because we're in the primary brief. But this is this Amazon earnings will be a bellwether for, the, for everything. It's not Microsoft. It's not Apple. Amazon is everything. It's in everything. Microsoft is not in everything, and neither is Apple. Neither is Facebook. They're all different. Amazon is the one that encapsulate, encapsulate yeah, that word, all of them. But this Motley Fool thing was bearish. Amazon is spending to keep up with demand. Uh, uh, duh. Rising costs keep Amazon stock grounded. Uh, okay. So, um, you know, this is, it, it's funny. Oh, I love this. Look at their little small, um, small things here. This article represents the opinion of the writer who may disagree with the official recommendation of a Motley Fool premium service. Isn't that great? I love when you buy shit and they tell you to do something and then somebody else underneath their flag says, don't do that. So now they're hedged. We were right. Well, this one service said to buy. Ah, we were right over here. We're Motley. Questioning an investing thesis, even one of our own, helps us critically think, blah, 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 blah. This is not how you do it, you morons, and that's why your company sucks. In your investment thesis, in your premium service, you should say, here's the bullish case, and I'm buying it. Here's the red team. You do it in one plan, man. You don't have this type of shit, right? Because maybe some of your premium service people didn't see this article. This is a failure. Um, so this is, this, is, this is interesting. I just had to share this because this is... Exactly. As long as you take all three sides, you're always right. Goose, Amazon's combination of planes, trucks, ships, and delivery vans staffed up warehouses has put it in an excellent position to get customers what they want, when they want it, whatever, whenever, wherever they are this holiday season. Yeah. So I'm just sharing this with you because going into an earnings call um, is, uh, you know, is you see this type of stuff. And it just, it's comical. Da, da, da. We talked about that, the in-store stuff. Uh, talked about that. What was this? 
Oh, that was some technical analysis stuff. Uh, I'm liking the melt up in Amazon, guys. It, it it ain't. Let me get rid of some of the clear, clean up some of this stuff. This is really cool. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this in um, in AR on Thursday. This was homework. You have to read this before Thursday. This article. Uh, it's really good, man. About what's going on. Um, and maybe in a bad way with the plant medicine and the psychedelics. It's turning in, Los Angeles is turning into shrooms, shamans, kosher LSD. Why Los Angeles is suddenly tripping out. So, and even in here, some of the people in LA are like, this isn't, just because a lot more people are doing it doesn't mean it's good. They're doing it essentially for the wrong reasons. I, I don't like to impugn anybody's motives for doing something unless I really kind of know what's going on. But th there are, some cool holistic folks in this article going, this isn't, you know, let, let's, let's kind of, let's keep our eye on the ball. So do me a favor and read that uh, before Thursday. Okay. Um, so homework for AR. Uh, 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 yeah. And then can psychedelic tr uh, drugs treat physical pain? I really think we're on the leading edge of all of this stuff, guys. So, um, David, for what it's worth, I think that the surge in Tesla price psychologically sets the table for an Amazon run up, even though they're not related. I don't disagree there. So, Andrew, I made a 10% profit in my portfolio from trading Amazon, but scared of it this week. But thank you for the guidance. Uh, remember, guys, uh, uh, earnings are a slap in the face, right? I mean, 5%. Holy shit. Um, so, remember whatever happens happens it's out and then we move on right it you know uh, i'd love for amazon to keep going up here i, I just don't know what's going to happen that's why rarely do i trade uh earnings um i have a feeling and you know i i have my feelers out and we're starting to cover amazon more in our calls uh is it, it will be uh we nailed it six dollars and 75 cents last time i said it's going to 3300 they're gonna have good earnings but it's going to, they've leveled off from scandemic. Now we've had three months of trimming our sales, moving shit around, doing, doing, doing. Uh, you know, uh, we get these earnings calls once a month, folks. It's not like Amazon just works that day for the earnings call to figure shit out. So they, they're, we're going to get, and we're going to get guidance. That's the, so we'll, again, 25% is the left side of the chart. Here's how we did this quarter. And you'll see the initial reaction in the stock. And then, we wait, do some knitting, and then hear what Andy Jassy or whoever is going to be on the call says forward. And the biggest part of Amazon earnings will be the forward look for Christmas, man, for Kwanzaa, for winter solstice, whatever the hell dancing around a tree you do. Uh, that's what's going to be uh, critical. Right. Does that make sense? Um, so keep keep. I just don't know. Literally, they they're they're a coin flip. Earnings are usually a coin flip. I think they're going to do good, uh, but even how many times have we seen something do good and then the stock go down? That can happen. Sell the news. We've we've seen this in a, in a ton of cases. Okay, so uh, we'll see. We'll debrief or brief on Thursday, and then we'll talk about it in solo Amazon on Monday. But let's go with with Tesla because. Chris, psychedelic medicine is everywhere. Really coming to the forefront, not mentioned uh, much in early 2021, March, imagine what the next six months will bring. You got it, Chris. I mean, I, I, I there's no way in hell I'm gonna claim perfect timing on this, but I, I think our timing is insane. Me finding Amber and Marcus and meeting them and going to dinner in Dallas, it was for that Warrior Health Foundation event. I took Jack over and we you know, got to do some shooting and. Uh, we got to shoot with uh, uh, Marcus and I were on a team. He and Jack on one of the on one of the whatever they call a hole or whatever you know the clay pigeon course. Uh, Marcus gets up there. It's one where they cross each other. Pull, boom! He hit both of them. I was like, oh my god, dude, that's incredible. My son Jack, pull, boom! Hit both of them. Marcus is like, what the fuck? Jack's like, uh. <laughs> um, and then they came to Boca, and then famous i gave him a check i'm like I, we've raised a lot of money for our foundation i don't, i'm not in the i have a couple day jobs right now i can't build stuff for for what i want to do yet here's some money and they're like what are you doing in two weekends nothing 
<laughs> Holy shit. Well, I was doing something in two weekends. So, Chris, you're right, man. I, I, you know, I was ignorant to it before or maybe blind, but now I see, man, healed by the light, not blinded by the light. So I think you're right. Uh, it's I, I, That's why I'm going to this convention, man. I'm going and I'm going to be a sponge. I'm going to shake hands, kiss babies, and listen. I want to I want to see everything that's out there. And I told you, Marcus, uh, he had talked to and still talks a lot. I'm going to get more. I have a call with Marcus tomorrow. Uh, Senator Kerry, former Senator Kerry, not the traitor, the hero one. Former Senator uh, 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 Bob Kerry was a Navy SEAL in Vietnam, lost half his leg. He didn't come home and say everybody was a baby killer and throw his medals over the fence. He's at a private equity firm. And these these private these big private equity firms are poking around the psychic. They're not poking. Marcus told me he's like, dude, they're they he sees he sees it. Uh, he he was going to be on the board for uh, vets with Marcus and Amber, but his private equity he had some rules. He's like, I am on board with you guys. We saw Senator, I'm sorry, former Governor Perry, Secretary Perry, uh, over. So this is um, this is this is good. This is good. I tell everyone it's the next Botox works for everything. Uh, neurological uh, cases. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm with you. All right. Let's go to Tesla. Now, we can all sit here and laugh as it's up 6%. It can keep going up. Let's be perfectly clear on this. Tesla can remain irrational longer and you can stay solvent. Uh, the, uh, one of my, I asked him this. Didn't send to me. Uh, I was asking for the math. It, what it was, it was a, it was a throwaway sentence of it, the math right now. Just it, they, their earnings would have to hit whatever it was for the next ten years to support the stock price right now, which we all know uh, that shit's done. I remember years ago, man, when we used to trade Amazon uh, on the Trade Monster platform. Anybody remember down here on Amazon on the Trade Monster platform what it said for Amazon? There were four numbers in front of the decimal for PE. <laughs> Do you guys remember this? It was like at one point I remember Amazon's PE was three thousand. But that's when I started to come up with this. This isn't your father and mother stock market anymore, guys. If you look at the math for Amazon, you would short the stock. Here's how much money it makes. We know what he does. He takes all the even that little bit of money he's pissed that he made because he wants to put it in the shit and become the Death Star. And it frustrates Democrats. Oh, you rotten kids. We can't tax them because Amazon doesn't make any money. God forbid a company, quote, makes money and reinvents and invests and pays and this and innovates. Ooh. And, the, you know, the ugly, uh, what's it called? The uh, tax on unrealized capital gains is, again, rearing its ugly head. Isn't that funny? So can I write off unrealized losses? Are you going to tax my unrealized gains? Well, great. I got a shitload of unrealized losses I'd like to uh, write off. Anyway, guys, here's what I'm getting at. Yeah, exactly. God forbid Tesla uh, or uh, God forbid a company follows the rules that Congress makes. Isn't that funny? Um, so we'll see. Yeah, they pay a ton of taxes, man. They pay payroll, uh, unemployment, social security. They, it, to say Amazon doesn't pay taxes, it comes from somebody who is an ignorant person. All right, guys, uh, let's, let's press here. Uh, yeah, oh, trust me. I remember Tesla at 150 when I said that. I'm with you, Steve. Yeah, they, they tax you on your unrealized gains and then the next day the stock goes to zero. What office do you do, go to to uh, to get your money back? So here's what I'm talking about. When's the next scheduled shit show? Well, you can put it on your calendar. It's February. September, October, we're going to squeeze into a month because it usually happens the way it happened this year. Halfway through September and halfway through October is your shit show. It's the September shit show. The next scheduled shit show, I'm going to say this. You ready for it? Will be in February. I guarantee it. 
If I've been doing this for 31 years, I'm going to say 31 years, it's a February shit show. I'm not shitting you, man. It is like clockwork. Fourth quarter earnings have all come out. It's miserable around the country, except if you're in Florida. It's the anniversary of my marriage. Um, kidding. Kidding. Uh, it's just uh, February sucks. It's short. The days are short and it's dark. It's misery. February is the most volatile month of the year with September. Okay. So I would right now as Tesla's up 6% again, buy some Tesla puts, put them in your filing cabinet and forget about them. Forget about it. Pam's birthday's in February. So it's a wonderful month. Um, where would you buy them? I have no idea, man. This is just one of those times where I'm like, okay, don't do this, guys. If I'm, this is a lotto ticket. This is the official time when I'm like, it is gambling. I'm going to tell you this is gambling. Tesla could be at five thousand in February. <laughs> Holy shit, man! So, but when you see something like this, guys, even the smart money, even the money that's in it right now, my Twitter feed. All day has Tesla shit all over it. It's just, of course, it's, you know, it's going to 1 million and shit like that. So I, I get it. But God, my God, man, this, we all know, let's just, on your screen is a gap move. Period. That is a gap move. What do we know about gaps? The stock tends to fill the gap. And if it fills it and stays, it's bullish. I get it. And Am uh, Amazon. Uh, Tesla could absolutely do that. If, if it fills the cat, uh, gap and goes lower, it's bearish. I mean, that's just this, this is what it does, period. Let's say 40% probability of this, 40% probability of this. Last time I checked was that was 80. Well, there's an 80% chance it just keeps doing that. But we know that that doesn't happen. Tesla ain't immune to the market you know, pullbacks and shit. We haven't even started talking about, we briefed it a little bit right here with, if they, uh, not that one, this one, if they get whatever their, where is it? I'm sorry, right here. Whatever their shit show is, guys, if we get some sort of horrific taxes in there, I think cinema and mansion are going to save us all. But if we do get some sort of shit show, do we get a Wiz's birthday? Thanks for the card and the gifts. December 31st, Awfulness. Do we get end of year tax selling? Do the Democrats screw us and do this retroactively? Uh, yeah, we. This happened last January first. What are you talking about? You asshole. You weren't even in. Uh, Biden wasn't even in office. Well, it's retroactive. Or do we get a January first, twenty twenty two? All this shit goes into effect, guys. To to Scott's point over in the Max Afterburner, the dude ain't looking out more than a week right now. I have to. I can't be Joe Tactical Trader, man. I have to put my binoculars down range. You have to as well sometimes. This is a perfect opportunity. When you, do, you, when you see a stock do an F-18 at the end of the runway and goes straight up, it's time to throw a couple shekels at it, man. Take some drinking money and buy some Tesla puts at half the gap. Let's say they come up with some insane tax thing and people are like, oh, my God, I got to get out of some of my Tesla. Again, don't do this if you think Tesla's going to keep going up. Tesla has wiped out more idiots, uh, you know. So, you know, Dennis, I don't even get how a bankrupt company buys 100,000 Teslas. Don't I, 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 I deal in math. But what's half the – where did this thing really launch from? 850. This is the day I bought a shitload of Tesla calls, and this is the day I sold them. So this is – I'm not revenge trading. I, I love if, – if people had done that that day, God bless you. I love you. Um, but somewhere around here, guys, man, maybe the 900 level, uh, buy some puts. I mean it's just – I know that – I get it. Tesla's financing and this and the mouse eats the cheese and the rocket fires. Um, I, I'm with you, Jim. I think part of this absolutely – is a, is, is a short squeeze. <laughs> Jeff, going to Aspen to guarantee a shit show 
on this. I, I will I will go. I'm going to spring break skiing in Aspen as usual. Uh, that will guarantee it. But guys, I, I, I will. I'm going to do this. I am going to buy some no shit puts on Tesla out here, and I do about 900. The stock's up six percent alone today. If we just get a that pullback, okay. So let's go out into the future. And this is just Kentucky windage. This is me just spitballing here, man. And I guarantee you, they're probably not going to be cheap because a lot of people are thinking like this. I mean, hell, buying one of these puts is 40, 4,900 bucks. But what could you do? Right? And Goose knows me because he's already typing in the chat box. Buying a straight put is pretty expensive. So Goose beat me to it. Uh, 900 was Tesla's old high. There you go, Kathy. Goose said, what about a Tesla put debit spread to manage the risk a little? The March 800, 750 to cover the whole shit show. I love it. So Goose beat me to it because I wasn't going to just buy these puts. I was going to sell a lower strike put to help finance it because I'm cheap. I live in Boca Raton, East Boca, not West. Uh, let's look at what Goose did because I hadn't even started pricing anything out. What was that? The 800, 750 to March. So you do cover the February shit show. So he's buying the 850s and selling. Sell, 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 sell. Uh, selling the 750s. Big wide debit spread to give you some nice potential profit swath. Um, uh, oh, 800s. I'm sorry. We're going to come up with 850. There we go. 800s and the 750s. That's a little bit better. Okay. I like the I like the way this looks. I wouldn't do 15 of them, maybe 10. And five. I like that, man. Risking five, 4,400 bucks to potentially make, you cover the shit show. Uh, you know, this is nice. Ted, you could do both. Ted's saying, hey, why why debit spread instead of a credit spread? Ted, you can do both, man. You could do a burner trade on Tesla. You could go out and sell a bear call spread on top of it somewhere. But that the problem with doing that right now, uh, Ted, is that you're putting a lid on it. Selling a bear call spread up here is you picking a – you're touching, you're, you're, you're touching something hot here. I would wait, Ted, to leg into that. So I like the way you're thinking, Ted, but wait. We can kind of leg into a burner trade on Tesla. Put the debit spread on now while it's cheap because when, not if, Tesla turns and starts to head down, that debit spread will start to be a little bit more costly for us. If we already have it on, we make some money. I get it, Wiz. Well, when it turns, the credit spread's going to be, uh, I'm going to, it's going to be uh, less premium. I get it. But that's why we got to be Johnny on the spot. Does that make sense? So I would do it this way. I would put the debit spread on <clears throat> down here first. When, not if. Good point, Goose. Goose says there is too much variance in the credit spread right now. Exactly. There's This is a shit show up here. Stay away. Warning Will Robinson. Do the debit spread first out into the future. And then you could actually, Ted, you can actually take some shots of opportunity too. You don't have to go out and do a March bear call spread. Start taking some front month shots, right? Do a bear call spread out to Friday uh, type of thing. Does that make sense? So this is the initial, let me grab a screenshot of this. This is the initial trade. <clears throat> you guys could probably count on one hand the number of times I do a debit spread and count on one hand the number of times that I do a debit spread <clears throat> this far out into the future. So this tells you that I am thinking about this. 
I'm glad Goose set the trade up for me because I was going to sit here and just <clears throat> start doing some Kentucky windage. So this trade risks 44 to make potentially 21 grand. Okay. Now the 21 grand, if you're sitting there going, man, I'd love to spend 4,400 bucks and make 20 grand. That's if the best or worst case scenario happens. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. Thought I hit mute. All right, let me grab a screenshot of this. <clears throat> I'm trying to go flying here in a little bit. I was going to take Mitch flying, but he's got he's doing some work today. All right. All right, I like this trade. And we will keep this in the background and to Ted's point, we will we will fire a bear call spread on top of it or numerous bear call spreads. So let's get into the Tesla uh back to Tesla. I get it that the stove's hot, but this isn't revenge trading for me. When I see trade ideas and I just got filled on it right out of the gate. When I see good trade ideas, potential trade ideas, I'm going to take them. Exactly. If we get an end of the year sell off, it's going to create a good dogfight opportunity, man. Again, guys, warning Will Robinson, do not do this if it's just going to keep going up. I just don't, you know. This this gives me a little bit of an end of year hedge if we get a Christmas implosion or sell off or anything like that. Or the stock just takes a break, guys. This is nuts. That's a little nuts. Trust me, I see nuttier. But nuttier usually ends, man. All right. All right. Let me um what the hell was that sound? No idea. All right, I'm going to uh uh uh, uh <clears throat> so I'm filled on that. Uh got this AMC in here, which I I'm, uh, I'm a complete idiot uh with. That's my fault. Squeeze the wrong uh weapon there. And then uh, Amazon, I was going to sit here and sell. Like I said, I made 5400 bucks at 5405 yesterday on three Amazon short call uh, things. Uh, this is, I like this. I like hanging up here, which is nice. Uh, maybe later, maybe after I go flying or I don't like going flying with these short Amazon calls on, man. I mean, look at the premium in these things. <clears throat> like the 3450s at the Friday sell the 3450s and again i'm trading a little bit of a bigger portfolio but even look at this even if you own you, you did if you have one amazon long contract out a couple years selling one of the 3450 out the friday brings in 4900 bucks that's not keeping this on until fridays guys this is just dog fighting it i mean take a look at yesterday these little moves these little moves, selling to this pop, it dropped to here. I got out of it. Selling to this pop, it dropped. Those were like sixteen hundred dollars, fifteen fifty-five, and twenty-two fifty. Three spreads. Uh, it's doable. You have a couple of these contracts out into the future. You sell three of them out the Friday. But me, dog fighting with with a little bit more. Look at this. That's fit forty-nine thousand dollars potentially by Friday. But again, not holding until Friday because the volatility is through the roof. We got earnings this week. But if the thing if you bring in a credit right now of 49 grand, guess what happens if Amazon goes down like three bucks in the next hour? That three bucks is about a grand or two grand out of it. So it's some cool, this is kind of my SPX trading for the week is just doing this with Amazon, right? So uh, it's good stuff. I mean, hell, you could, I could hold these out to Friday, but I'd go nuts. I'd go like, <clears throat> I mean, hell, even there's $30,000 in the, uh, in the 3500s I'll bet you there's premium all the way up to 3600 look at that I could sell 10 of Friday's 3600 that's a hundred ninety dollars above where we are right now I'm fucking hell I might even do that what a great problem to have if by Friday Amazon's above 3600 holy shit look at that um and are you an Amazon 3450 or 3475? I'm not in any of them now. I was taking some, I had a couple orders this morning, uh, the 3475, 3475, 3450s, and I canceled them because every time I put one of those on, 
it turned. And I'm like, nope, it might be a bigger run. I put it on right here. It turned. I'm like, nope. I was th this, so e each one of these pops was me canceling my order. <laughs> and so that this is why the uh, investment clubs are really cool is because I, I, if I put something in the chat box and then I put CNXD after it, that means canceled. Because I, I, I canceled all three of these this morning because I, I, I was like, oh boy. I've seen these kind of Amazon ledges and then all of a sudden out of the blue, it, it, it rip higher. So I'm in nothing right now, Ann. Long answer to your short question. All right. Good brief, guys. Uh, 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 uh. All right, guys, I'm good. Uh, Tesla, I, I could lose four grand, could make 20 grand. That's what that's what that trade is. I, I just don't know. Uh, oh, there you go. There you go. That's us right there. Who put on all these bearish trades on Tesla? How dare them, heathens? So that's us. Hey, we're already making money. Woohoo. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. All right, guys, I got to get going. I'm going to go jump into my flight suit. I'm going to go do some flying, uh, go touch the face of God, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Weekly options, I, I, you know, we'll, we'll do our brief tomorrow, but I, I've been sitting on my hands, man, because I'm glad I have because I actually kind of tracked what I would have done. I'm like, ooh, 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 especially with tech this week. I'm like, nothing. Let's just sit on our hands. Uh, uh, sometimes the best uh, winning move is not to play. All right, guys, I'm going to get going. I'll get the replay posted shortly, and I'll get the, uh, I'll get the, uh, I'll, I'll send out the uh, debit, debit spread. I can't believe I just said that. I'll send out the debit spread now uh, via text and email. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. Happy hunting. Make sure you hedge. God bless. Make sure you, when you get a chance, listen to uh, episode seven here and, and let me know uh, what you think about it. And uh, I'm Sledge. Uh, he's like, I've shared it with everybody I know. So that would be, uh, let's try and create some uh, change and some healing, man. So if you can share it with uh, with your folks, I'd appreciate it. God bless and I'll talk to you.